Hello, and welcome to our, our Facebook Live video. I think the third time's a charm. We're going to try to get this off without any hiccups, but my name is John Mackey. I am the Business Development Manager with AgriFresh. I'm accompanied here with uh, Lionel, who's going to be helping me out uh, with any questions that you guys might have. Uh, today's, today's video is to give you guys an understanding of who we are at AgriFresh, uh, what we look for in a driver, um, some of uh, some information with regards to our provincial nominee program. That's the program that you guys would uh, go through in order to immigrate here to, to Canada and Manitoba. Um, as well as the investment, we're going to go through a little bit about what the investment would be for all of our drivers coming overseas. Um, and our processes within the internal processes of what we do in, in order to uh, attract the right type of driver and find that uh, driver that's willing to um, do the long haul routes and uh, providing fresh and healthy produce for Canadians. Um, if you guys have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to um, to respond to it and uh, Lionel will, will shoot them here. But this is a, a shot of our brand, uh, AgriFresh. We're specialized in hauling produce from California into Canada. And uh, what we're looking for is, this is a, a shot of, of a, uh, an ideal driver for AgriFresh. And AgriFresh, we are, uh, we adhere to all of our values within the company. Uh, being a member of the AgriFresh team means that you are committed to providing fresh and healthy produce uh, for Canadians. Uh, just to give you guys some scope on that. Last year, we delivered close to 43 million pounds of produce. So uh, here, here's, here's uh, our, our values at AgriFresh. We stay rooted meaning that we're loyal uh, to our company, we're loyal to our, our customers. Uh, we're always growing as professionals. We have a great mix of uh, professional uh, experience as well, but we're always looking to uh, continuously grow in our professions. We continuously nurture uh, the stability in our lifestyles. Um, and we, finally, we actively harvest. And that's the competitive side to AgriFresh. Um, this is the ideal candidate for our company, we look for uh, these these um, values and how how you guys would um, approach these. And you know, being a being a rooted uh, driver, you know, to to the companies that you guys have had in in the past, you know, always willing to grow. Uh, there are many differences uh, between the North American uh, trucking uh, to to European standards. Uh, you guys are always looking to adapt to that uh, to that experience and this this opportunity, as well as we always look for the stability in your lifestyle. Um, and then finally, uh, looking for drivers who have a great attention to detail. Um, so what does this look like? This is the AgriFresh advantage. This is how we see ourselves uh, separating uh, from our competitors. So what you would uh, you, you would be introduced at AgriFresh into a customer culture. Uh, everybody understands uh, at AgriFresh that we provide a critical service and uh, we have a culture that is uh, geared towards the customer service uh, that we provide. Uh, we are a carrier with purpose. Uh, we're highly specialized in delivering uh, fruits and vegetables from California into the Canadian prairie provinces and we stick to this uh, core lane and that's this is our purpose uh, this is what we do and we do it consistently and we do it very well and ultimately uh, we're providing pro a prosperous partnership for all of our drivers and employees at AgriFresh uh, we're always looking for the win-win and uh, these are our uniques and together they're the CP3 is how we uh, we uh, define this as the uh, unique value set that we provide for all of our drivers in our fleet. And so what uh, our, our drivers enjoy about AgriFresh is our modern and efficient equipment. Uh, being here uh, at AgriFresh, we're exclusive to the Kenworth make. You would either be driving a T660 or T680. Um, this is the, the best truck that we've seen on the market that provides the comfort and safety uh, for all of our drivers in the long haul setting. Uh, we, we have refrigerated trailers, uh, what we call reefers, um, at, at AgriFresh, they're carrier make. And uh, you know, one of the, one of the best parts uh, about AgriFresh and what we continuously hear from our, our drivers is how well uh, and maintained our, our trucks are within our fleet. 
uh, specialized food food carrier. So we are the California connection for our freight customers. Uh, we found that there's a $4.1 billion industry coming out of California going into the Canadian Prairie Provinces. Uh, we haul for uh, major grocery chains like Loblaw and Federated Co-op. These are market leaders in providing the fresh and healthy, nutri uh, the nutritious uh, produce for Canadians. Our, our southbound uh, customers get us in and around uh, California. This is where uh, you guys would be coming down from the Prairie Provinces in and around California. Our, our uh, southbound freight customers help us get there. All of it is food grade. So what, what that means to you guys is our customer base provides us with consistent freight. And so on the screen here, I sure hope I, I, you guys can see this well, uh, but you're driving miles that you should be, uh, you should be obtaining. At, we're averaging about 11,000 miles per month. Our drivers average this um, uh, per month. Uh, work hours in a week, we're averaging anywhere from 58 hours up to 60. I know this is a bit different from European standards. Uh, we, the driving standards and hours of service, uh, you can drive for 13 hours in Canada and 12 in the US. You should be averaging 58 hours per week. Your starting base rate would be at 45 cents per mile and we also provide accessorial pay. Uh, that's anywhere from picks and drops, uh, trailer washouts, uh, the easiest way for me to describe this is just to add another dime to your rate per mile. So that's just to put up here, you know, an extra 10 cents per mile. Uh, but what you guys should be expecting is a starting salary of anywhere between $65,000 and $70,000 per year. And so uh, our specialized, uh, being a specialized carrier, uh, we have specialized training that is led by uh, Randy South, our driver trainer and support manager. Uh, he puts you through our in-house training. This is after you have gone through all of our licensing with our, our MPI, which is the Manitoba Public Insurance. We provide you with in-house training that deals specifically with our specialization, as well as going through some of the electronic logging devices that we use. We use a, a program called Keep Trucking. And uh, this is where you guys would get a little bit more understanding of your hours of service. And he really does go uh, through this with you guys fairly well. But at the end of the day, we're always looking for communications. Uh, it's, it's very important to AgriFresh. And in fact, it's ingrained in our logo. Uh, communication is key. And so this is where you would uh, be receiving our um, protocols of communicating with the office as well as um, uh, any type of uh, any type of communications that need to take place within the job and, and uh, also we go through some of the sanitary practices that we do dealing with food grade commodities uh, we provide sanitary practices as well as compensate you for that but ultimately at the end of the day we're looking for um, before you guys get into a truck uh, we're looking for efficient and safe drivers uh, but also confident drivers uh, in, in the job that, uh, that we have for you here. And so uh, that's, that's who we are uh, a bit with AgriFresh. And uh, so what we look for is, um, in our drivers goes with our qualifiers. And so when we're looking at uh, your guys' CVs or resumes that you guys are bringing in, and when you sign up online in the application, we go through our qualifiers. And so uh, one of them would be your work experience. So we're looking for drivers who have three or more years of, of experience and, and accustomed to the long haul driving. And that's, what, uh, that's one of the, the factors of our, your work experience. Uh, we're looking for those rooted drivers. Um, uh, you know, we have a, we have a term, um, you know, job jumpers, you know, trying to find the, the right fit for them. Uh, that, that, that plays into part with uh, your your um, your your application to the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program as well. Uh, your experience can't be regarded as um, full time experience if you've only been at an employer for let's say you know five months. You have to have at least six months uh, within the 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 uh, employer, and they will regard that as um, as necessary experience. 
but the rooted category is the loyal, loyal, you're loyal to your employers. Uh, food grade transport, this is another area that we look for um, with food safety practices. So you guys are familiar with uh, the transport, transport of food grade commodities um, and some of the food safety practices that you guys have had. Um, but ultimately, and this is a big one too, uh, it's the road terrain. What are you guys used to? Um, you know, experiencing the, the roads here in North America, from what I've, uh, I've, I've learned, is quite large. There are bigger roads, uh, longer miles, uh, or sorry, longer driving duration um, for, for our, our drivers, but snow and ice uh, is, 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 is looked at as, a, as an asset to, um, you know, uh, understanding the same types of, of the road terrain that you guys would experience here in Canada and North America, uh, as well as mountain. We go over uh, California's mountain chain that separates um, the Nevada on, on the east, eastern side of, of California. Uh, mountain experience is, uh, is needed. So that's the work experience criteria, your driving history. Um, we want drivers that don't have it, ha haven't been in any accidents, and this will be verified by an abstract. Uh, driver's abstract form is a document that shows your driving history. Uh, we, we would have to verify uh, that with a translated document of, of your driver's abstract, as well as, you know, we're looking for a clean, a clean abstract without any uh, large infractions to it. Um, and as well as is an efficient use of the equipment that would deal uh, with your idle time, your fuel uh, consumption, and um, how you use the equipment. Uh, your driver's license has to be a class one equivalent. Uh, that's the um, class CE uh, license in, in European standards. Uh, but that, that would be uh, equivalent to a class one. That's, that's something that we look for. Uh, right out of our applications um, and long haul routes. So, how many how many kilometers are you currently driving? Uh, I've heard anywhere from ten thousand to thirteen thousand kilometers in a month uh, is is uh, is a good is a good reflection of a long haul driver in European standards. Uh, the equipment side, we look for drivers who have experienced uh, what we call the reefers. Uh, this is the refrigerated trailers. Um, hauling, hauling food grade products. Manual transmissions. Uh, you would most likely start in a manual transmission. Uh, that's one of our Kenworth T660s. Uh, we, we would need to have an experienced driver with manual transmission experience, um, which provides more control uh, on the road, especially going downhill and um, just being on the road there. Uh, with Another one is chaining tires. Uh, you guys are, are familiar with putting chains on your tires if you're going through snow or if you have to go over Donner's Pass. Uh, that's where most likely you would chain up here with AgriFresh. Um, we're, we're looking for drivers who have experienced that or are familiar with it, as well as willing, willing to, do, uh, to perform that. Um, and finally, hours of service. If you guys are familiar with your hours of service tools, I've heard of uh, DigiTacoGraph. Um, is one of the tools that is used to keep track of those hours of service. Uh, we use an app called Keep Trucking, and all, all uh, drivers would receive a tablet in each of their uh, trucks, and that's where you would uh, keep, keep track of your hours of service as well as your trip sheets. It's basically your main uh, form of communication uh, to the office. And finally, like one of, one of the uh, areas that we look for is the stability and lifestyle. So we do perform uh, or we do uh, require a criminal record check. Um, no crimes have been committed. Uh, we're not interested in bringing uh, criminals over uh, into, into AgriFresh, uh, but it has to be a clean criminal record check. And, and if there were any infractions on your uh, criminal record, it just wouldn't uh, work out uh, with us. Your marital status. Uh, your wives or, or husbands would need to understand the life of a trucker. Um, you're going to be gone from home anywhere from 20, uh, 15 to 20 days on end. Um, and your wife or, or husband would, would receive a open work permit on top of your application. 
Uh, the children, again, uh, if, you, if you have kids, you need to understand that dad's going to be gone uh, from, from home about 20 to 25, or sorry, 15 to 20, 20 days on end. It's the life of a long haul trucker here in North America. So it's, again, the, the time away and the stability in your lifestyle. And finally, we get to the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. This is part of our qualifiers uh, when we're looking at, at a drug applying from overseas. Uh, so just to give you guys a, an understanding of what the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program is about, uh, their, their whole mission is to enhance Manitoba's economy through uh, jobs that are in need here in Canada. Uh, we, we've been... Um, partners with the NPNP for the last seven years and we've we've developed an excellent relationship with them where we are uh, uh, considered a trusted employee status within the program. Uh, some of our drivers who have uh, gone through the process with me should be familiar with this flow chart. This is the processes uh, with the NPNP. There's different gates that you would need to get through and it would all start with a uh, face-to-face uh, interview with an immigrations officer from the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program and this is where they would be asking you um, a lot of the questions of your, your background, uh, why you would like to immigrate to Manitoba, uh, what you know about Manitoba, uh, what you know about the job here at AgriFresh, what was the onboarding process like um, and that's that's where it would start and then you would go through a series of different gates here uh, the name of the game you know when we're going into the MPNP and we submit your profile to the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program is communication back with your employer uh, we help you through this process we make sure that uh, everything is in line and if you have any questions we're always there for you guys um, and ultimately, this gives you a pathway to your permanent residency here in Canada. And so that's the Manitoba Provincial Nominee pro Program. And some of the qualifiers that we would have uh, in, in our office would deal with that, uh, that, that program in specific. So we're looking for drivers that are between the ages of 21 and 40. And uh, Canadian connections that you would have, uh, any education, uh, family or any business connections that you would have in Canada, we would we would be looking to understand that a little bit further uh, on behalf of the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program, as well as the work experience that uh, that you would even need to get into the program is three plus years. So if you were to have one or two years, um, it, it, it doesn't fit our criteria uh, for for being qualified for the position. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't even fit in with the, the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. So they are looking for experienced uh, workers to help, uh, excuse me, support um, Manitoba's economy. And then finally, it's the ability to speak the English language. And that, that is supported by the dreaded IELTS exam. I've heard a lot of, uh, of our drivers saying, is there any way that we can go around this uh, no, <laughs> that's the simplest way that I can I can describe it. Um, the IELTS exam needs to be scored in a 5.0 or higher in each category. That's reading, uh, listening, speaking, and writing. Those are the four categories that we would be looking for, as well as the MPNP and how your ability to speak the English language. Um, as I said, uh, communication is uh, critical at AgriFresh and uh, we we have to have the ability to um, to understand you as well as you understand us. So that's the IELTS exam uh, 5.0 in each category will uh, will we'll give you um, an easier route uh, getting here to, into Canada. So I'm sure that there's some some questions with regards to the IELTS exam um, but what I can tell you guys is that there's just there's no way around it. Uh, you, you have to have the ability to speak English. And finally, one of the uh, one of the questions that we that we send to you in an assessment is, do you have the necessary funds in order to settle to Manitoba here in Canada? 
And uh, I just want to make it clear that we are not looking to see this money. We're not looking to take it from you guys. Uh, this is a budget that uh, we're letting you know in advance of what it takes and the investment that, uh, that you would need to make in order to uh, get here to Canada and start your training and go through that training. Um, so uh, why don't I just bring it up here. Uh, what I've done is I've broken it down into major um, spending items like lodging, that's where you would be staying, um, for your your time and training. So your training would uh, consist of roughly around 11 weeks is what we're averaging, but it could be pushed out to 15. And so when I budget this uh, and going through the settlement funds, I go through worst case scenario. You might, uh, any time that you fail an exam, so any any licensing that is not transferable over to Canada. And I believe there's uh, a couple of uh, countries that have class five from the UK, uh, Switzerland would be one, uh, Germany, a class five license would be transferable over to Canada. If you're coming from a country where it isn't transferable, and this is on your class five, let me, let me just be clear on this, your class five license is for you to drive a car. Um, no class one license is transferable anywhere in the world except for the United States. So everybody that is coming from overseas must take the mandatory entry level training. Mandatory entry level training came into place in September of this year where all new drivers that are looking to uh, get their class one license must go through a minimum of 121 and a half hours of class time and, and road driving. And we, we go through one of our partners at a driving school where you would be set up for. Um, and that's gonna be the, the largest cost to your guys' um, settlement funds. So going back to it, you would be in training for uh, anywhere from 11 to 15 weeks where you would have to pay for your own lodging, your own transportation, food, and you know it depends on if you, if you really like a food this is a heavy um, you know item like this is for somebody who really likes to eat you know, nine hundred dollars is what uh, you might be spending um, your fuel uh, would be anywhere from four hundred to five hundred dollars and your startup costs uh, your tools um, you know mailing address uh, safety gear uh, we, we rounded this up to about twelve hundred and fifty dollars but as you can see, the, the largest cost item would be your MPI licensing, which is roughly around $8,000 Canadian. Uh, your total settlement funds here, it looks like $13,650. This is your guys' budget. Um, if you want to be staying at the Ritz Hotel, your, your lodging would, would go up. Uh, you know, we do provide you with pathways into uh, cost effective um, places where you could stay close to, to the office. Uh, the transportation side, um, you would have to rent a car um, and provide the fuel for that. Um, and this is, this is all in a 11 to 15 week training period and this is your onboarding uh, side to the job. So. I'm sure we, we will have some questions with regards to this, but what we do um, in our, our first initial meeting is we are further qualifying you for the position as well as uh, letting you know what type of documents that we need to, to go through in order to verify the process um, or verify your, your guys' experience. And then the second uh, meeting, we'll go through this in, in greater detail and, and understanding, you know, what it is that uh, you guys are looking to invest in. But uh, what I can say about the MPI licensing is that it typically costs Canadians uh, about $10,000 uh, to get your class one license. But we do subsidize that uh, training and that investment for you guys um, by, by $2,000. So it, it'll only cost you $8,000. So here's a, here's a quick shot of what, uh, what our process looks like. Again, uh, we're always looking to help you um, throughout the process. I, I, we understand that it's, it's a large um, commitment for you to immigrate to a new place, um, uh, you know, a new country. So we're here to help. 
And so what we're always looking to do is find out what's happening in your life. We're, 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 we're trying to find that qualified driver. Uh, some of the performance expectations that I went through, you know, the 11,000 miles in a month, uh, being away from home, you know, for 15 to 20 days. These are the performance expectations uh, that we would have of our driver. Some of the opportunities and challenges. I've, uh, I've been uh, talking to some of our, our Swedish drivers out there and, and uh, Marcus has made it uh, clear that sometimes I, we may sugarcoat this. What I really want to make sure that you guys understand is this, this is this is hard work. Uh, you would be uh, extending your hours um, from nine hours in, in Europe, European standards to thirteen. Uh, this is this is an opportunity for for you to um, you know really actively harvest in and providing a a, a great um, for a lot of uh, drivers say. You know, I want to come to Canada because it's a better opportunity for my family. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to come in and help us uh, deliver fresh and healthy for Canadians. Uh, but it comes with its uh, list of challenges. That's it's just different from uh, what what you may be used to. And then, and also, we're looking for solutions for growth. So that's our happening. The economic side, uh, you know, in our processes, we're looking for collaborative ex exchange and and really breaking down how we uh, pay our, our drivers uh, from a total compensation package standpoint. And like I had mentioned before, we're, we're going through the settlement funds and our investment in bringing you guys over. We pay for your flights, uh, your compliance fee, and a portion of your training. Um, we also go through the MPNP process and the timelines that are, are involved with it. Some of the lessons that we've learned, uh, being pro produce specialists, we've We've been in, uh, you know, in business for over 20 years, uh, providing this critical service for Canadians in getting their uh, fresh and healthy produce. Some of the North American driving training uh, that you would be learning from uh, Randy South, our driver trainer and support manager. And uh, being that specialized carrier, the equipment that we have, the training that's necessary in order for you guys to be that confident, uh, confident driver going out there to uh, California and back, as well as immigrating to Canada. We've, um, like I said, we've been working with the MPNP for seven years. Now uh, we, we completely understand the immigration side to uh, getting here in Canada, and we have that uh, all, all ingrained into our processes. And finally, we're looking for profits, uh, as well as you are. Uh, this is uh, the job that we have is consistent. It has a stability uh, for you and your family. Uh, you're you're recognized uh, for the performance that uh, that you do, um, and we're looking for the prosperous partnership. Um, ultimately, we're we're looking for win-win opportunities. So this is our our happening, our economic impact, uh, the lessons that we've learned, and the profits to be had by all and this is the help process so what does that look like is you would be contacted by me after we finish qualifying you and after you uh, fill out an assessment form you would have what we call a fresh fit meeting and in that uh, after that meeting we would have a healthy profits meeting where i said uh, where we would break down the settlement funds give you an idea of the mpmp process timelines um, then you would be moving over to randy uh, Randy South, who would be giving you some pre-employment testing in order to get you guys prepared and ready for um, for all of the license, licensing that is required. And ultimately, we're looking for that fresh and healthy partnership. So after the first meeting that we would have with you guys, uh, the Fresh Fit meeting, we would require a series of documents. Here's, here's the jump to the next, uh, the next stage to our process here. We would need to collect a series of documents and what that looks like is an updated CV or a resume, um, a copy of your passport, a copy of your driver's license, a criminal record check, a driver's abstract. Uh, what we do like uh, to see with our applicants is some pictures of your current unit that you're driving. Uh, this helps us with understanding the, the type of equipment that you're used to. Um, and then and then finally that, uh, that dreaded IELTS exam, which all, all of us need to have in order to uh, get to the healthy profits meeting. And, and that's where I would, I would, like I said, I would show you the flow chart, 
what we expect for timelines for you guys, as well as setting up a communication cadence um, you know, between myself and uh, the MPNP program. And then you would go into the MPNP program. So we submit your application to the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. And this is where they would do their um, screening for uh, for the position on our behalf, as well as uh, understanding a little bit more about your, your work experience. And so you would go through a series of, you would start with an interview, uh, you would get your, your invitation to apply, you would submit an expression of interest, then you get your letter of advice to apply, and then you submit your full MPNP application. And after that, after all is said and done there, uh, you would um, receive what I call the golden ticket. It's your certificate of nomination um, and a letter of approval from our provincial government supporting your immigration here to uh, Manitoba. That process roughly takes us, on average, about 17 weeks within the MPNP. Uh, it's, it's a very fast stream. Uh, it's the strategic initiative uh, that, that has us, that, uh, our ability to uh, go through this process very quickly. Um, and then after you get that golden ticket, the certificate of nomination, you would then be passed over to Randy South, who uh, does a, a fantastic job in preparing you guys for all of the licensing uh, that is required. I had mentioned uh, some pre-employment testing. I believe he has three different levels for you guys, and that's where we would uh, send you that digitally um, through email and communications while you guys are getting your work permit, or sorry, your work visa in order to come here. And so once you get through your pre-employment testing, uh, we, we book a flight for you, we pay for your, your flight, we pay for your compliance fee. The compliance fee is, is uh, for the purpose of you guys getting your work. Uh, visas as well as the CIC, uh, it's Canadian Immigration Council, uh, is aware that we have signed a contract and saying yes, this is an employee uh, of AgriFresh. Um, once you guys get all of the, the work visa, we book your flight, pay your compliance fee, and eventually you guys get here um, and we start the process of those 11 to 15 weeks of onboarding. Um, but it starts with uh, the day one bookings of, it's a heavy jam-packed day uh, where you guys are essentially becoming Canadian citizens and then you start your class five training if it's required and then you get into the class one driving school and eventually uh, the in-house training that we provide and then you get your final truck assigned and you start delivering fresh and healthy um, for Canadians. So that's what I have for you guys. Uh, I really appreciate it, but I'll, I'll open it up for questions if there are any. Yeah, yeah, there definitely are some questions. Um, we've received them on the page and also in direct message. But we have uh, people, we've got uh, John from Switzerland, and we've got um, Mladen in uh, Serbia. We've got uh, Raf, or, or Rafe in the UK, and Andre in Sweden. So we've got people from uh, all over Europe and, and other uh, countries. So one question was, how about team drivers? Do you, do you only hire single drivers, or can a couple uh, drive with you? It's a it's a great question. Uh, we would we would be open uh, to some team drivers. Just uh, it, it would depend on it. But um, you know what we what we have experienced in the past is uh, super single um, drivers, where it's it's not a full blown team, but uh, they drive like it. And Marcus and Erica from Sweden. Um, are that super single team. They came in as husband and wife, and uh, she got licensed um, right along with her husband, and um, she, she is helping us uh, deliver fresh and healthy as well. So to answer the question, we would be open to it and just to understand it a little bit more about how that would work for you. But uh, for the most part, we do, uh, we only, we, we, we hire single drivers, and that's currently what our, our fleet is. Okay, and could you speak a little bit more about uh, winter experience, so winter and snow and mountains? Could you explain a little bit more about what you look for and why that's important? Yeah, that's, um, it's important for drivers to have experienced uh, snow and ice. Uh, we, don't, 
we don't want to have a driver that has never experienced that and um, you know get them through the 11 weeks of training and and just jump on the roads with uh, you know black ice on their um, being in Manitoba uh, it is sometimes the coldest place on earth <laughs> where you might find but um, the road conditions uh, it's it's not um, uh, you just have to have that uh, snow and ice experience in order to really, for me to explain it uh, fairly well, uh, you guys will be driving on, on slippery surfaces and um, it goes hand in hand with chaining up your tires as well. Uh, going over mountain passes, uh, we don't run our equipment into BC like the Canadian Rockies, but uh, you guys will be driving over mountains when it gets down into California. And, uh, you know, for our current drivers in our fleet, they've experienced Donner's Pass, which uh, has, if you guys want, you, you could just do a simple Google search in the images of Donner's Pass and, and you'll see the, the amount of snow that uh, you guys will be driving through. Okay, thank you. Um, there's uh, questions about, you know, if you have other types of work like local and, and regional. So could you maybe just take a moment to explain what the main lanes are you know from the the prairies to california and arizona what they look like and, and why you specialize in those yeah we we specialize in the long haul uh track we don't have uh local runs um yet uh with within our our business model uh but what we do is is just the long haul routes from california into either you'd be delivering into calgary or regina saskatchewan uh, that's my hometown uh that uh DC 34 from Loblaw is is currently um, is where our drivers would be delivering into. Um, you know, we 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 provide this service uh, for major grocery chains such as Loblaw and Federated Co-op, and that's what we stick to. So we, we don't uh, we don't have the local runs uh, available to to our uh, to any of the drivers right now. We're just looking for that long haul trek. Okay, thank you. Uh, how about if somebody only has experience with an automatic? I know you touched on manual transmission a little bit, but is that again like a hard and fast rule and, and really required? Yeah, it's uh, it's a necessi necessity because uh, you guys would be starting in a T660 or T6, um, uh, most likely in the T660, which are all uh, manual transmissions um, to start off with. So it is, it is a, a critical component. Uh, if you don't have any manual transmission experience, then uh, we, we can't uh, we can't help you out. Okay, all right. And there's been a couple questions around LMIAs. Is there anything you'd like to to share around that? If, yes. If either someone, well, I'll let you we're, take it away. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Uh, we're going to be uh, available for the LMIA program in 2020, moving forward into the new year. Uh, this is a program, a different uh, program that uh, deals specifically with the federal uh, government rather than uh, so much with the provincial government. But the LMIA uh, applicants, yes, we are going to be taking in uh, a couple of applicants for the LMIA program of 2020. Okay. And it, it just uh, quickly, is there, are there any major differences between the two programs? Is one easier than the other to be accepted or can you not compare them that way? Um, it, it's... Uh, I think the, the, the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program is a bit more thorough, uh, but it, it definitely is a, a spot where you are committing to that permanent residency here in Canada, where an LMIA program, it could be a two-year work permit and then, um, you know, that wasn't for me, it wasn't, uh, you know, Canada wasn't for me so much, um, so they can, they can go back. So I think that's the, the major difference between the two programs. Um, one of them is dealing with our provincial government, um, and the other one can be a work term, uh, you know, of two years uh, or more. Okay. All right. Uh, great. Well, we can wrap up in a few more minutes here. We've got a few more questions coming in, but could you just summarize again the main criteria? So if, if I were, were watching this and considering it, what are the, say, the, the three to five main things that really I need to have? Because some people have just joined later and they, they may have mm -hmm. missed that in the beginning. So we're looking for drivers with uh, three or more years uh, experience in the long haul. Um, we're looking for drivers who can speak the English language and uh, the ability to communicate in the English language, and that's dealing primarily with the IELTS exam. Um, 
uh, no criminal record, um, uh, your ability to cross border, um, as well as, as uh, your ability to drive long, long haul routes, uh, being on the road anywhere from 15 to 20 days. Uh, we're, we're looking for drivers who are safe and efficient drivers um, as well. Again, that would all be verified by your driver's abstract and a series of documents uh, that we would have. And, um, you know, I, I think I'm going a little bit over the five uh, criteria, but, uh, you know, it, you would have to have that Class CE license in Europe, um, but the Class 1 equivalent. So you're familiar with uh, the larger equipment or the larger uh, weight uh, weights that you would be uh, driving with. So um, those were those would be some of the highlighting areas um, of what we look for. Okay, great. So John has a question and he's asking, you know, you've been very clear on the requirements and how hard the, the work is, um, but he's asking, you know, why should, why should someone work for AgriFresh? You know, what are the benefits of your company uh, to join as a truck driver? So your time to your, your sales pitch, if John wants to hear it. Well, what I can tell you is that uh, we are a carrier with purpose. We provide a, a, provide a critical uh, service for Canadians um, with uh, this, our specialization of hauling fruits and vegetables from California into Canada. So if you're looking for a, a position as a driver with a higher purpose, um, this is the company for you. Um, you would you would be helping us uh, in Canada to eat healthy, you know, from our our uh, our government who just came out with uh, the Canadian Health Food Guide is calling for more fruits and vegetables in our diets. Uh, they ask us to fill half of our plates uh, anytime that we're having a meal, and you know, anytime that uh, we are, uh, you know, sharing a meal with with our families, um, you know, and, and you're you're shopping at the superstore it's most likely that it's been delivered by an AgriFresh driver. And so uh, the, the, the benefits to our drivers is we provide the best uh, compensation package for the work that we currently do. Uh, after your guys' first year, I know I mentioned your starting rate would be at 45 cents uh, per mile, but after your first year, we would increase that to half a dollar every mile that you're driving. So um, we provide the best total compensation package for the work that we do, and uh, we provide a service that's critical for Canadians. Okay, thanks. So the questions are rolling in here. Um, so could you explain a little bit about what a typical rounder would look like? And if you could even explain how that differs from Europe, right? Because obviously there's longer runs yeah. and less stops. Um, so a typical rounder, uh, you guys would be uh, picking up one of our, our southbound uh, customers freight that deals with food grade commodities. So anywhere from, you know, oats, uh, canola oil, um, peat moss is one of the, the bigger um, products that we would we would deliver that from either Manitoba, uh, Saskatchewan, um, or, or somewhere in, in Alberta on the southern part of that. You guys would get in and around California. Um, you guys would be, you know, on the road for anywhere from three to four days, uh, getting in, in or around California, delivering for one of our southbound uh, customers, you know, dealing with that food grade. And then you'd be picking up uh, a load from California and delivering into either Calgary or Regina, and that would be considered to, to be one, one, uh, one rounder. So uh, you guys are, are making about 600 miles in a day. Uh, your, your, your trek would be about four, four days on the road. But one thing I should note, note here uh, for you guys in, in the industry of, uh, within the produce industry, when you guys are, are at the loading docks, it's not unfamiliar that, uh, or it's not um, uncommon to be waiting at these sheds from anywhere to four to six to sometimes even 10 hours uh, waiting for your load to be loaded. That's one of the major differences between North America and uh, Europe um, is the waiting times for, for you guys to get loaded. So um, typically a, a full rounder should take you anywhere from eight, excuse me, eight to 10 days and we would ask our drivers to do two rounders uh, before we get you back home. Okay, very good.
as well as uh, I, I believe a, a good uh, um, something to note there, our, our, our owner and CEO, uh, Kevin, just went on a trip with his son. Uh, I believe we have some links to his journey in that. Uh, so if you guys want to know a little bit more in detail, um, our owner uh, just finished uh, running a, a uh, rounder with his son, uh, who is also our, our maintenance planner at the office. Okay. So we have a couple more questions, but how about this next one? If someone were interested in moving forward, so they meet the qualifications and they are serious about moving to Canada, what should they do next? Apply to AgriFresh. <laughs> okay, how, how would they do that? You, you could go to our, our website and on our website, agrifresh.ca, you would go to the four drivers section. And that's where you guys can learn a little bit more about what the day-to-day -day looks like uh, for a driver. And you would scroll down to the programs and in the program section of where you can apply, uh, there's a Canadian, there's a, a, a program for um, our Canadian drivers out there and then a program with uh, international. So if you guys are coming from overseas, that's where you would click the apply here button, which would be kicked into our online application form and this is where you would be giving your, your information about your name, your, your email, contact information, uh, where you're coming from, um, as well as a series of documents that you can attach to that application form. I Please uh, attach a CV or a resume that sh shows your work history so that we can do our due diligence in qualifying you for the position. Um, what I could tell you after we, we receive that is you would be sent an assessment of 20 questions. They're very easy yes, no questions, um, which would be dealing, uh, uh, centralizing every uh, from what I've just talked about here and uh, what we look for in, in a driver. Okay. I answered that correctly. Okay, no, that's great. Um, Claudio and a few other uh, people have asked about uh, log books and hours of service. So how does that work in, in simple terms? Well, um, what I can tell you is that we use electronic logging devices, which is all ran through an app called Keep Trucking. That's our, our program that we use. And all of our drivers would receive a tablet on where they would um, keep track of that hour, those hours of service. Um, what I can tell you is that your hours of service in Canada is 13. Uh, hours of driving in a day and in the US is 12. Um, Randy South, our, our driver trainer and support manager, uh, goes through this in detail with you guys as well as um, making you aware of it through uh, that pre-employment testing phase before you guys get to Canada. He sends you out uh, some, some testing on how you would do with uh, your class five, just some road and regulations uh, within North American standards and then he goes into the class one side of things the air break um, more about that hours of service and then uh, the third the uh, the third um, level of your pre-employment testing deals with um, video tutorials uh, that are followed up with quizzes it's called a, a program called carrier's edge and that's where he would uh, help support you guys in the hours of service but uh, that that's how it I see it in a nutshell there. Okay, great. Well, just a couple more quick questions and we can wrap up. Uh, so if someone has done two rounders, so two, say, nine-day rounders, and they're home after 20 days, how long do they stay at home before they would go out again? Uh, that's a great question. And, and what, we would, uh, what we would do is, is collaborate with you and, and understand how long you would want to stay. Uh, what I can t tell you is that you're entitled to six days uh, in a month. Um, but it, it depends on, on uh, what you guys want to do and how to, how to regulate your schedule uh, with those two rounder trips. So uh, it would be a, a conversation that you would have with our, our operations, um, you know, but uh, everything that, uh, that we, would, we would be able to support you um, with that time at home. Okay. All right. Uh, Martin asks a question about the trailers. Are there multiple trailers? Like there's, you know, a, he says a, a 24 meter train or just single trailers? They're, they're 53 foot. I don't, I don't uh, want to get too granular in, in there, but uh, we use uh, 53 foot trailers uh, that can haul a capacity of uh, roughly around 45,000 pounds. We have uh, carrier uh, refrigerated units. Uh, 
I, I've heard a lot of um, European drivers uh, using Thermoking. Um, in fact, one of uh, one of our drivers that I just had a meeting with could uh, tell the difference between a Thermo King and a carrier uh, refrigerated unit. Apparently, the Thermo Kings uh, provide them with a better lullaby <laughs> when he's sleeping. But uh, we 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 are um, exclusive to the carrier uh, refrigerated unit. They're 53 foot um, trailers, and they can haul up to 45,000 pounds. Okay, uh, it's an interesting question. Do you have uh, winter tires or? Or spikes are they used or just chains chains just chains I, I do believe um, that we have uh, used the socks there's a, there's a new uh, type of um, you know uh, something to put on on the tires to help you get that uh, traction when you're going over snow but uh, for, for the most part we're using chains um, when it gets to that point and when the amber lights are flashing to um, you know to chain up uh, that's that's what we currently use so chains on our tires Okay. All right. Well, how about we can just uh, wrap things up, John, and maybe we could just uh, sign out for everyone, tell them what to do next. And if they have yeah. other questions, tell them what to do. If you guys are, are interested uh, in AgriFresh, I, I, please uh, go to our website. Uh, that's agrifresh.ca. And you go to the four drivers section. That's where you can join our team or apply to one of the programs that are available to you guys. Again, um, Thank you very much for letting me do this. Uh, I was a bit nervous uh, doing this here, but uh, I, I, I encourage all of you guys that if this is what you're looking for to drive and experience the long haul here in North America, uh, AgriFresh is, is the company for you. And uh, if you're looking to crush miles and, and making 11,000 miles in a month on average, uh, we provide that consistent freight for all of our, our, uh, our drivers. and. Uh, ultimately to give you guys that prosperous partnership that you're looking for here in Canada and I might be biased but in one of the greatest countries on this planet right on and just to, to, to summarize uh, we have a last question here about pay rates and vacation pay and just you know, finish up on that just to summarize the typical okay. range and so you guys would be uh, starting off at 45 cents per mile so we uh, pay our drivers a per mile rate. You guys would start off at 45 cents in your first year. Then you would be going up to 50 cents per mile after your first year. But what that looks like is 11,000 miles, uh, 45 cents is your base rate. And we also have accessorial pay uh, that I can break down for you guys. Uh, but the easiest way for me to describe it is just to add another dime on, uh, on your base rate. Um, which should be at about $65,000 to $70,000 per year. And that's a gross. So that's um, before taxes. Okay. So thank you very much again, you guys, uh, for, for attending this live video um, on Facebook. I, I look forward to seeing your application come through. Again, you can go to our website, agrifresh.ca, and to the four drivers section, um, and you guys will be seeing me later. We, we conduct uh, our interviews through a, a program called Zoom Video. Uh, that's, that's where uh, you guys would see me again, um, you know, back at the office. So uh, thanks again for your attention to, to this uh, message and look forward to seeing you guys. Thank you.